What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here. Welcome back to another Apparition Net Studio video. So in this video, we are Apparition Net Studio, if you don't know what it is, first of all, let me just cover that because I know there's a lot of new subscribers from the PS4 scene. We've just surpassed 140,000 subscribers on the channel. So thank you very much to all the new people who have been uh, subscribing to the channel recently. Unfortunately, this video is probably not your cup of tea because uh, it's more for the 360 guys. I'm, I'm sure most of the people who have been subscribing recently have been for the, all the uh, Switch and PS4 videos. Um, but ApparitionNet Studio is an all-in-one mod tool that uh, I'm one of the developers of. And this is a tool that we've been running here for about two years. It's the biggest all-in-one mod tool uh, for JTAGs and RGHs in terms of RTE modding. Um, and yeah, we've been running it for two years. We've just surpassed the two year anniversary of when we officially launched this software back on the 19th of October 2016. And in honor of that, we are doing a, a $10 discounted sale right now. So you can get uh, the software uh, for $15 instead of the normal $25. Um, plus that still comes with the one week trial of XB Online time. Uh, which I will go over how to uh, redeem or access at the end of the video. So, yeah, if you're if you were thinking of uh, purchasing Apparition Net Studio, now is definitely the time to do it while it's on sale because you get quite a significant discount right now. So, not only has the tool been out for uh, two years, but we currently have over two thousand three hundred customers on the tool, almost two thousand four hundred right now. So it's just crazy um, how you know popular it's been over the past couple of years. So so I just wanted to kind of do a quick overview of all the stuff in the tool just to show you what uh, what's available in there and not go too in depth on every single thing since I've done videos on that already. So starting off with the Call of Duty tools here, um, I'll just show one of these COD tools, um, but I will open another one just to show you that, you know, they're all, they're all of the similar size. So you've got an IP spoofer there. Um, I'll go over the console tools in more detail after we go through this stuff. So basically you've got your recovery stats. So all CODs have recovery stats uh, where you can do unlock all, you can set each stat individually, you can do set all stats, you can do quick recovery which will do everything, it will do stats, it will do unlock all, it will do your medals and all the other kind of things, your class names, uh, it will set that all for you. You can read the stats from the console, reset the stats, you can do legit stats where you enter a prestige and randomize all the other values around that prestige so if i do 10th prestige you see the values increase so you can set them all there's a class name editor so you can edit your class names for each of your classes you can change your clan tag you can go ahead and save and restore your class data so that's uh you know if you create a bunch of custom classes you can save those so that if you reset your stats or you or you're doing a different account you can restore those same classes on that new account um or on the same account that you reset uh, rather than having to manually you know set them all again uh, so then you've got modifications so you've got client mods uh, where you basically uh, you need to be host of the game but you select you load the client list which loads all the people in the game uh, their their gamer tags and then you just click the gamer tag you want to apply a mod to and then you click one of the mods to apply it to you can see that there's mp slash zm which will work on multiplayer and zombies and then you've got options that are just for multiplayer. So there's another tab page full of them here. You've got teleportation, uh, all client stats as well. So you can edit the stats of the, peop of the people in your game. Uh, although that's private match only. Uh, that won't work in public match, the all client stats. You need to be in a private match for that. Um, and then you've got zombie clients. So just some more mods that will work for zombies only. Like points and its own unlimited ammo and give weapon and perks. You can also change client gamer tags as well. If you just double click the gamer tag, it will open up the gamer tag changer. And from there, you can go ahead and, you know, set their gamer tags to multicolored or change it. Um, you can even set their gamer tags to their IP addresses or to their, uh, to their, um, city or country or region. Um, so you have quite a lot of options there as well. And then we have the, uh, global game variables. So that allows you to, Again, you need to be host for that, but allows you to edit stuff like jump height and gravity, that and player speed, which will affect all the players in the game. Then you've got console commands, so you can send game send server command, console command, middle text, and kill feed text. 
and say text for games that support say text. Then you've got the XUID spoofer, so you can spoof your whole profile to somebody else's with the XUID spoofer, or you can just spoof the gamer tag only. Um, and the gamer tag only does have all these other options as well. Uh, so RTE gamer tag, a looped message, multicolored name, all that kind of stuff. So then you've got off host modifications, which will work when you're not the host, including end game off host. You've got host mods, so some more mods for when you're the host. You've got force host, band bypass, stat spoof, which is basically uh, the remote recovery so that you can set somebody's stats without having to recover their account. So all of that there. So that's basically the COD tools. And just I'll just open one more just to show you that it has sort of similar stuff here. So here's MW3, same stuff basically. Uh, it's also got a, a big loadout editor for MW3. And then you've got, you know, same class data, same client modifications, all client stats, global game variables, console commands, off host mods, host mods. So all the CODs are very similar in, in the way, in their layout. They all have the same general layout. And so then you've got uh, Halo. So here's the Halo 4 tool. So in Halo 4, you've got uh, player settings. So when you're the host, you can edit your player's speed and jump height. Uh, you can edit the projectiles that your weapon shoots. Uh, you can edit your time scale. There's also vehicle options. So you can edit the speed of your vehicle, what your vehicle shoots. You can even change the, the turrets of your vehicles as well, uh, which is pretty cool. And then there's quick mods as well, which allows you to edit a bunch of uh, map stuff pretty quickly just by turning them on and off so quite a lot there uh, you've even got you know an XUID spoofer and a gamer tag changer and uh, you can edit your service tag and give yourself XP and basically again the other tools for Halo are pretty much the same so same general stuff player settings vehicle settings quick mods and your lobby options and your XUID spoofer and gamer tag changer then we've got uh, other games, so GTA 5, which uh, is not going to be as big as a menu, I'm not going to lie, like mod menus have mo a lot more stuff for GTA, that's just how it works unfortunately. Uh, you can't add, there's certain things that you can do in mod menus with GTA that you just can't do in a mod tool, but compared to other mod tools for GTA, this tool has far more, because most mod tools for GTA are just, you know, RP and uh, money. Whereas this, as you can see, a lot more stuff. You can do God Mode, Unlimited Ammo, Give Health, Set Your Wanted Level. You can turn off uh, Police, Drop Items, Give Weapons. And, uh, you can spawn Peds in, give them God Mode, turn them into a Bodyguard, um, all that kind of stuff. Uh, you've also got the Account Menu. Uh, you can give yourself unlocks for your vehicles, spawn vehicles, uh, upgrade your vehicle change the vehicle paint, all that stuff. And in single player, you can also, you know, change the time of day, freeze the time of day, change the weather, um, teleport to uh, custom coordinates. And then we've got, uh, okay, Left 4 Dead 2, which has a lot for Left 4 Dead 2. Give weapon, god mode, no clip, console commands, F FPS counter, uh, gravity, give weapon, set your player name, drop explosives. And then there's controller bindings, which have even more. So you can activate forge mode, which will bind all of these um, items that you can spawn in to different buttons on your controller. Same with the equipment spawner, will bind all of this to these various buttons. Cheat mode will bind a few things like no clip and god mode and unlimited ammo. And then you can do default binds to reset your controller back to normal. And you can even customize binds by selecting something and then selecting a button on your controller and then entering a, a CVAR to bind it to and then you can actually save that to a file so that you can reload that at any point when you next play the game which allows you to make the tool as big as you want. Um, you've also got the same for Left 4 Dead 1. Pretty much the same exact stuff. Um, then you've even got CSGO which has a uh, Dedicated server mods which will actually work even when you're not the host, so stuff like no recoil, wall hack, third person, FPS counter, changing your name and sending text to everybody in the game will work when you're not the host. When you are the host you can also give weapons and do no clip and unlimited ammo and teleport everyone. Um, and there's also stats as well. Then you've got Battlefield 3 
which is off-host modifications for Battlefield 3. Uh, so stuff like ESP, one-hit kill, uh, wall hack, um, show enemy tags, all of that stuff. Basically the same for Battlefield 4 as well. A bit less for Battlefield 4, but it's mostly the same kind of stuff. And then, yeah, you've got a few other games here as well. And then you've got a bunch of arcade and indie games. And then, finally, moving on to the console tools, because there's quite a lot of good console tools in, in here as well. So you've got the console manager, which is basically like your neighborhood equivalent. So you can add your Xbox 360 in here. You can uh, right-click. You can reboot, uh, shut down, reboot title. You can take screenshots. You can make uh, the console default. You can reconnect, grab the console info, uh, console functions, open, close your disk tray, change your fan speed, send custom notify messages to the screen. And uh, as for the screenshot tool, you can take a screenshot, you can also upload to Imager, which is pretty cool, so that when you take the screenshot, it will also upload the um, the screenshot to Imager and output it in your browser with an Imager link that you can just go ahead and uh, paste into a chat. So that's actually really useful if you want to you know, take a screenshot and send a screenshot to somebody. You don't have to take the screenshot and then capture it in ShareX or Gaiazo because this basically does that for you. Uh, so another little useful feature there, a dash launch editor, which allows you to edit all your dash launch settings, including your plugins list. Um, then you've got a KV checker, where you can load a bunch of KVs in there. It'll tell you if they're banned or not. It'll give you their serial, console ID, manufacture date, region, OSIG, and DVD key. So then you've got the file manager, and the file manager allows you to, of course, browse the file system of your uh, 360 also allows you to copy files back and forth from your computer to your Xbox and vice versa. Um, and then you can, of course, remotely launch your games as well by going into the game directory and uh, double-clicking the default.xex or default.mp.xex to launch the game. Um, and then you can also add your XEX files to the quick launcher so that you can launch the games much faster uh, the next time you want to launch your game by just opening up, opening up the quick launcher and then the game that you added in the file manager will be there and you can just double click it and it will launch it. So there's that. Um, not only that, the file manager has a lot of extra hidden features built in. For example, if you double click the launch.ini file, it will allow you to open that straight, in, straight up in the dash launch editor. Uh, on top of that, you can double click a KV on your hard drive as well and it will give you the information about it, whether it's banned or not and all the other information. Um, and then if you just double click a file that's not supported, it will just try and open it in whatever you know your default program is on your computer. So you can edit it and save it back on the on the hard drive much faster. So yeah, that's the file manager. Then you've got the XB remote, which is basically a, a virtual controller. Uh, so you can control your console with the virtual controller if you don't have a controller connected. Uh, the achievement unlocker which allows you to unlock your achievements for your games. Then you've got module debugger which you can use to inject plugins directly into memory so that you don't have to you know add them as a dash launch plugin and then reboot the console. Uh, you can unload plugins, you can load plugins, you can load plugins from the Xbox or from the PC which is pretty awesome. Um, and then there's also the advanced view as well if you want to check base addresses and module sizes and you can uh, dump um, XTXs to your PC as well. So quite a few things there. The module updater allows you to update XTX files. It will patch the XTX file with the title update for you. You just need to be on the game uh, with the title update applied. Then you've got the network sniffer which allows you to pull IPs um, on pretty much all of the CODs and Halo as well, the Halo games. It'll pull IPs from people in the game. It won't just grab their IP address, it'll also grab their local IP, their online port, their MAC address, their XUID, and their machine ID. And you can also do a who is lookup on the IP from here as well, which will grab extra information like their city, region, country, zip code, and ISP. So quite a lot there too. And I think... That's pretty much it. I mean, settings as well. You can change your theme. If you don't like the default theme, you can you can change it. So that is basically that. So last but not least for 
I did say that if you buy Apparition Net Studio, you also get a week of free XP Online time. Um, so to access that, once you have bought the tool and you've created your account, you just head over to the website apparitionnet.co.uk and you go to uh, the user panel. And then from the user panel, you just log in to your account. So the same account you would log into on the tool. And then from within here, you'll be able to redeem your XP Online token right here. Um, now you need to make sure your CPU key is correct. So the CPU key in here on your account needs to uh, match the one on your console. So otherwise it, it will not work. It will not redeem uh, because it's, it's linked to your console. So make sure the CPU key is correct. You can change the CPU key once from within here uh, if it's incorrect. So just ensure it's, it's the correct CPU key and then you can apply my offer, which will generate you a token for that console and you can go ahead and redeem it if you're running the XP Online plugin that is. You can also change your hardware ID from within here and your password and update your information. You, the download link for the software is also on here. So yeah, that is basically everything. So quite a lot of stuff as you can see in Apparition Net Studio. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And if you're interested in picking up the software, um, there is a link in the video description. And uh, also we have a support chat on Discord. We have a Discord community for Apparition Net Studio. Again, it's on the website. Um, if you click on support and help on the website, it will take you down to the Discord because we have a, a support chat for anybody who is struggling to set things up properly. Um, you know, because obviously you have to have the right plugins on and stuff like that. So if you're having any issues with the software, you can go ahead and contact us on there and we can help you out and uh, help you sort any issues that you might have. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.